three, two, one. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of TGE, uh, Technology, Gaming, and Entertainment. Uh, I'm Thunderbird, aka Bird, joined by Barky, and uh, we welcome you to this new uh, show and content. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it is going to be live streamed first, and then we'll be hitting my YouTube channel uh, in bite size and full uh, shortly afterwards. So uh, that is something I'm going to be working on. Uh, like I said, it's completely brand new, so I don't actually have a game plan for the release date, but it will be consistent. And once it is determined when the upload schedule will be, uh, we'll announce that and put it on social media. So again, uh, if this is your first time here, which most of you will probably be your first time here, we welcome you. Um, today, we have a lot to talk about. Yes. Um, basically, we're going to do a week in review of technology, gaming, and entertainment. Uh, this was a really busy week, holiday week. Uh, holidays coming up still, and there's been a lot of news. Um, before we get all that started, uh, I would like to shout out the fact that we do have uh, merchandise, actually, right now. Uh, it is on the Thunderbird um stream labs here let me go ahead and get that pulled up all right so uh yeah check it out like i said still working out the bugs this is our first one so bear with us here but yeah on thunderbird live and stream labs we have merch available uh for purchase now uh everything from hats t-shirts uh mugs backpacks if you want a stocky cap or a phone case we got you if you want a thunder bra uh they are for sale now um, I have two on pre-order. Yeah, two pre-order. Well, they should be on their way. Already on their way. There we go. There we go. Or get yourself a towel. Wipe Let's, off your butt with it. Whatever you, you want to do. Tell you what, if one of you guys buy one of the merchandise, I will wear the Thunderbird bra in one of our... Oh, please views. don't. Oh, please no. Well, over the shirt. Oh, please obviously. God, no. Over the oh, shirt. Oh, over a shirt. No okay. one wants to see that. <laughs> just, just plain uh, Thunder bra. Uh, but yeah, every, every time you guys purchase any piece of merch... Uh, it does help support the show, so we appreciate any support that you do want to give, and donations can also be accepted in the top right-hand corner uh, of this site as well. So if you do end up purchasing something, we appreciate it, and let us know what you think of it. Ah, but before we get everything started with the news today, I have a couple of things that I want to go through. So uh, you know that I've been a long-term fan of Good Mythical Morning, right? Yeah. Uh, I've been watching since like 2012, 2013, I've seen every single episode. Uh, I am a fan of their mythical society and uh, I'm a member. I'm a tier three member. So uh, when you subscribe to it, it supports their show. And every quarter they give you uh, some merchandise. And uh, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things really quick that you don't know about. Nope. I'm uh, totally unprepared for this. Totally unprepared. Uh, but before Love I do, uh, I'm going to do... A shameless plug for Rhett and Link, because this is technically entertainment. And it's holiday season. It is holiday season. So, uh, Rhett and Link, your friends. For, yeah, for, from Good Mythical Morning, actually released a book, uh, The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. Uh, I ordered three. So uh, you can actually get a discount if you get three. Uh, one for me, for one for Addy, each, one for Bree. Each one different? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, is each one different? No, or? they're all the same. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just started... Uh, reading some of this so far it's been it's been really interesting um they aren't in the book uh technically so what is it technically about technically? Uh, te <laughs> that's a good question uh i am not far enough to be able to tell you yet what it's about but what i can tell you is that the two main characters names are rex and leaf <laughs> which is so good mythical morning but uh, I do recommend checking it out because they have been uh, awesome creators and influences to me over the years. And uh, let me just read you one of the raving reviews from the back of the book. This is from Jimmy Fallon oh, okay. himself. Cool. Jimmy Fallon says the following. I tore through all 324 pages of this book in one sitting, and I still didn't want it to end. I would have been willing to read as many as 325 pages or possibly even 326. Though, if I'm being honest, no more. they probably could have stopped at 323. <laughs> Either way, I love this creative book. So, yeah, Jimmy Fallon from The that's, Tonight that's Show. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, it's probably backwards on your guys' screen. But anyways, go pick yourself up. And a copy go of this watch book. Good Mythical Morning. Yes. Go watch Every it. Every morning. 
Um, don't know. Or weekdays mornings, right? Weekday uh, mornings? Every every week. Yeah, weekday morning. And they do have uh, shows on the weekend now with the cast and crew. And on Saturdays, they release Let's Talk About That, which is kind of like a weekly summary and behind the scenes. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of it is. We'll kind of we'll leave this up for a second, because here's the other thing that I want to go through. So every quarter they send out a to to their tier three members only a piece of collectible merchandise. And mine came in the mail. You don't know what this is, do you? I do. Oh, that's not fun. I do, but I haven't seen it yet. I don't know. Uh, so we're going to unbox it. And uh, oh. uh, what does it say here? Oh, you guys get two for one. News and yeah. unboxing video. From from Mythical. I don't know if you guys can see that. From Mythical Entertainment themselves. Uh, yeah, so this. I wanted to do an unboxing of this because uh, I've been waiting okay. for it to arrive for a while. Yeah, it's at once a quarter. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you have to wait a few months. I know what the next one is, too. It's pretty cool. Why is this not fun? <laughs> what? Like, when I had loot box, I didn't check. Oh, because, check. you know, it's an incentive to sign up. All right. Oh. Look at yeah, this yeah, as it yeah, comes show, out. Show the group. Show the group. Whoa. Rhett and Link scene Merle Haggard. Yeah. So they, they released uh, a small album. And Is it's a record? record. Is that record? Yeah. It's an actual record where they covered Merle Haggard songs on here. Uh, side A has Silver Wings and Side B has Driftwood. So getting your little bit of entertainment uh, news for today. Let's open this guy up. I love the boxing on it. I think it's pretty cool. Ugh, don't want to ruin it because this guy will probably go somewhere, somewhere back here, somewhere in the setup. All right. Ready? Let's take it out. First time actually seeing it. Whoa. Oh, we got goodies dropping on the floor. All right. Uh, oh, oh, this is worth it just in itself. That is awesome. Mythical recording. That's worth oh, it. Oh, there's just more in stuff itself. in here. Oh, a handwritten note. Okay, we'll read that here in a second. All right, so right here's the front. Oh, that's the back. Okay, right here. So, Rhett and Link sing Merle, uh, tribute to Merle Haggard. And then the back. <laughs> It's just them. They're back. <laughs> back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love that. That is that so is red cool. Link red. That's the, that's the. That's I the almost. I, gosh, I almost wish I would have gotten two because I really want to listen to one, and then keep one. Not open one. Yeah, and then I'm definitely not going to open this guy. But uh, yeah, so this is this is really cool. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you get for being a member and for uh, of the Mythical Society, which you just search uh, Mythical Society on Google. It'll pull up. And uh, it goes to supporting their show. So I am a huge fan of supporting creators. And uh, this is a way I can do it for some of my favorite people. And right here, you can see a handwritten note by them included in there. It looks like it's signed by Rhett and Link themselves. So let's see what this says. Good mythical morning. There are a few things more connecting than experiencing someone else getting a work of art that you also get. It's an indirect way of saying that in some way, you get each other. It's mythical. We bonded over the songs of Merle Haggard, and we're humbled to think that maybe you bonded with a friend over our work. If so, then our hope is that this brings all of us a little closer together. Semper, Curious, Rhett, and Link. That's pretty cool. That is pretty dope. This is the second handwritten note that you've gotten that I've gotten from them. So, uh, yeah, these will be coming. I'll be doing the unboxing in these uh, once a quarter. We got the little... Mythical, yeah, mythical recordings. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sticker. So yeah. Uh, go support Good Mythical Morning. Go watch your show. Right and link. Keep it up, guys. I'm loving what you guys are doing. Show is great. Merch is great. Good job. Uh, okay. So uh, before we get into the news, should probably mention our sponsor of this episode. Oh, that's right. We don't. We don't have a sponsor. Okay. Uh, but if you'd like to be, uh, you can definitely reach out to us on uh, Thunderbird Live at gmail.com. Yeah, sponsor an episode of uh, TGE. Ourselves. Huh? We sponsor ourselves. Yeah, we sponsor ourselves. It's, it's sponsored by uh, Burton Barkey. Uh, but yeah, so we have a lot to talk about today. Like I said, um, lots of news. First thing I actually kind of want to dive into is, uh, ooh, is uh, the Mandalorian and some Star Wars content. Because there's been a lot of stuff coming out about this. Um, let me see, too, if there is a way that we can switch this over. So we can look at it. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick switch, guys. Quick switcheroo. You guys are going to see like a little 
little snip, snip yeah, bit of what we you're going to see infinity us <laughs> for a second and then uh and then everything will be infinity back to normal it's infinity war you can't even see us infinity anymore uh there we go okay nice. so disney plus went live last month in november yep and with it came all the star wars content which uh almost all almost is it missing some yeah so like the um the uh holiday seasonal one where oh, the Wookiees. No, but, but you, you said want all that? Star Wars. That is incorrect. Is not have all Star Wars. <laughs> That's not even canon anymore, is it? Is that still canon? No. Because no, I mean, who cares? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> see, Disney they gave the axe to all the um, stuff that was not canon. So they they released everything that I believe they still want to be canon, which includes like the cartoons, um, Clone Wars. I actually haven't seen Clone Wars, but I've heard it's really Sorry. good. You you did start it. Is it pretty good? Yeah, I've um, it's really slow. There's good episodes. Um, I'm looking for someone to put out a good filler list because I don't really care about the filler. I just want like huge Star Wars books. I just want the story. Like I know that Darth Maul is in there somewhere. And I know I don't want to give any spoilers. He's in there somewhere, and I want to see that. And I know that, that too. Those episodes. Yeah. And like, there's a bounty hunter trilogy that I'm really looking forward to. I just need to find someone that put out something on the internet that has a good filler list. I found one, but it's not a very good one. So just that's what I'm looking for. I don't watch fillers. Yeah, and I'll probably start at some point too. Right now, however, I am wrapped up completely in the newest Star Wars uh, show that Disney released, which. Just by the way, I was going to throw out there, if you're a Star Wars fan, it's totally worth buying Disney+, Plus at least right now. Uh, Verizon, if you have Verizon, you also get it for free for a year. Oh, that's good info. That's good info. By the way, if you know uh, an episode list where he could skip, you know, fillers, let him know for Clone Wars, uh, in the comments. would love that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, The Mandalorian, right? It's out. Yes. It is awesome. One of the best pieces of Star Wars content if it, it honestly to probably come out since the main trilogy. Well, probably, yeah. Uh minus like I said Rebels and stuff. Some of the cartoons have uh raving reviews um from fans. But I would Just say first season though. Definitely the best thing that has been put out by Disney since they bought the IP. Oh, Hands yeah. down. Um and we'll get into some other stuff with the upcoming movie the train wreck that that's going to be uh, later this month. It's just, yep. it's looking horrible. But uh, The Mandalorian's out. It's awesome. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's actually written or, or directed by John Favreau, which is the same guy that directed Iron Man. One. Iron Man. Yeah. Yep. So they're bringing, they brought him on board. He definitely knows what he's doing. You could definitely tell the difference between him, J.J. Abrams, and... Uh, Ryan Johnson. Bro oh God, yeah. <laughs> the guy who just, I... Solely believe who must not him be and named. Kathleen Kennedy just wanted to destroy the entire Star Wars legacy. But anyways, Mandalorian, he yeah, the Mandalorian <laughs> is doing great so far. Um, the most recent episode was so directed far. by Bryce Dallas Howard. It was her directorial debut. Mm -hmm. uh, that episode was amazing. No spoilers. Which, I don't know if you know this. So she took so uh, Favreau. She basically just followed him him around. He gave her a lot of really good advice. But this being her first, like, actual debut, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, oh, yeah. I phenomenal. mean, it's a huge IP. I mean, yes, Bryce Dallas Howard, she's been in the industry for a while, but she has no credentials there's when it of, comes to directing. There's a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. That's the person that in um, Black Mirror, right? She acted in Black Mirror. She did she, the, she was in Jurassic World and a yeah, few she, other things. Yeah, yeah. She was in Black, I think, pretty sure she was in Black Mirror with the... Uh, um, the rating episode where you rated people. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure she was the the actress in that. I so love she's that done show. some acting. So she's she's been in the scene, but for her first acting on a huge IP, fantastic. For for directing, you mean? Yeah, yeah, directing. I mean, directing is. I mean, it's it's hard, and Star Wars is something as you can see is really easy to mess up. But uh, I want to talk a little bit because we're about halfway through, almost over halfway through the season. Uh, we're not going to talk any spoilers. But what I will say is the series has been really good, but I feel like it's at this point starting to lack direction in that it it was almost a novelty at first to get something so good in Star Wars feeling. But now as the season wears down, for one, the episodes are super short. And for two, there's only eight episodes 
for this entire season, and I really am struggling to find the plot. There isn't a lot a, of... There isn't an overarching plot No, yet. there's no... There, th- they what? haven't introduced it. Like, he's... Like, we understand that, like, Baby Yoda is gonna be part of the story in a big part, but we don't understand why they wanted to take Baby Yoda. I mean, is this whole first season just gonna be trying to explain and having subplots and explaining why they took yeah. Baby Yoda? I mean, because they only have four episodes left. They don't have a lot of time to explain where it's going because they're right now they're just making a lot of subplots and a lot of filler episodes you can't have a lot of filler episodes on a no. on a first season you know any good story has to have a conflict and this story set up a conflict but it was resolved within like the first few episodes mm-hmm. last episode was the first time that we kind of escaped the the main the first planet that he was on more or less um, he actually officially left. Again, not trying to spoil. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. We'll try and do this as spoiler-free as possible. And we're eventually probably going to upload a spoiler uh, version of a review for season one. But uh, what I could say is that, uh, for one, I think that the people who wanted him, there's some speculation that they might be with the cloning facility that was in the prequel trilogy because there is a uh, piece, uh, there's a logo on the scientist guy's shirt with the glasses in that episode that is the same as the cloning facility. And then uh, the other speculation is that um, he might, so he, who he's cloned from, if he's, if this Yoda character, whatever their name is, their species or name, if it's a clone of somebody that we already know, because this takes place post empire. Yes. This is the downfall of the empire. Yeah. This takes place after uh, return of the Jedi. Right, so it's completely possible. See, people are saying this is this might be Yaddle's baby, Yaddle and Yoda. But see, uh, they were pretty old, and Yoda dies in the original trilogy. And with how young this baby is, I find it unlikely that this is their baby. It seems more likely it's a clone. What's genius is that they took something, Yoda's species, which is really well known. Everyone really loved Yoda, and there's no history about it right there's we don't know we don't even know the name of the species why we have to call it baby yoda yeah we and have to come up with so the what but you know what do you call it the, the thing is is that <laughs> we're in episode four and we haven't hit any of that yet no and and getting back to the conflict there is no conflict so he got a bounty the bounty was fulfilled he uh, no spoilers yeah no no spoilers <laughs> he got a bounty bounty was fulfilled there's some betrayal that happens and he goes off on an adventure. And I was telling Barky that it's almost like, at this point, just uh, the Mandalorian and the baby is what they should have called it. <laughs> what what crazy shenanigans will they get into this week, you know? Space baby. <laughs> space. <laughs> the Mandalorian and the space baby. <laughs> That's what we'll call him, space baby. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, space baby's cool, but there's no, um, we need a big baddie. And they keep bringing in, like, these nothing bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the last episode, uh, I thought that maybe we were going to see, like, Baby Yoda get hurt or something. There was somebody that came up and was, you know, going to snipe them. And then two seconds dead. You didn't even find out who they were. So we need need conflict. Otherwise, people are going to lose interest in the show. The issue is, is, yes, they need a big baddie, but you also need a big baddie that's very interesting and good and the issue is is that during this time in star wars there's a void it's let's be honest there's a void it's not it's a hard thing to do just because when you can't bring in sith you can't bring in jedi because there's no there's no more jedi the sith are on the deck they're now the sith were already pretty much extinct right both jedi and sith and now you killed darth vader's dead one of the only sith sidious is dead no there's yeah Sidious is, see, that's the thing. He's whatever. He's whatever. Sidious (laughs) isn't dead. (laughs) Star Wars, that freaking mouse over at Disney doing the weirdest crap. He waves his wand. Boof, you're alive. Uh, Who who knows? Maybe we'll see Snoke. Maybe maybe they'll give him some. Favreau also did the Lion King remake. Yeah. Yeah. John Favreau has been doing amazing work. Uh, Although I heard that movie wasn't that good. It was good. It was just that. Anyways, it was pretty good. So. Uh, In conjunction with that, we're going to kind of segue over into talking about the Space Baby phenomenon, Meme Lord, 
himself all over the internet and everybody's memes. Baby Yoda, aka Space Baby. I have shared a stupid amount of Space Baby Oh my Baby gosh. Memes. And everybody is going nuts. Now, here's where the story and where the interesting piece of information comes in. Apparently, uh, Disney did noopsie. <laughs> Disney bet. did not think about the fact that people might find this face cute and adorable and want merchandise during the holiday season. And if you haven't seen <laughs> the, um, if you haven't actually seen the merchandise, uh, oh, we'll go bad. ahead. And, we'll go ahead and uh, pl once we you know do post production, we'll plug in. What we'll those put some actually, in like we'll up actually, here or something. The, yeah, we'll put those or over maybe maybe, maybe over, over here, here somewhere. Yeah, over there. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know where I'm pointing. We'll um, put some in over there. But yeah, just so you guys can see it, it's god awful. It's, it's so bad. It, it, I, I could have done. Yeah, you could've I could have done better. I could have drawn a stick figure on a shirt and it would have been better. <laughs> like, let's be real. Just use some of the memes. Uh, but anyway, so people have been freaking out, like, you know, and this is Disney. This isn't some small company. And one thing I will say is one of the major reasons you buy an IP and spend as much money as Disney did merch. is the, yeah, on, on Star Wars is the merch. You make so much money with the merch. I don't understand how they fail. This has to be intentional. If it's not, shame on you, Disney. Kathleen Kennedy, it, this is for, horrible. For example, um, The Last Jedi, or no, it was uh, Force Awakens before when that came out. Porgs were out before the movie came out. Yeah. They had pork they plushies did. that were came out before the movie came out. And you're telling me that The Mandalorian came out, they looked at this <laughs> cute little thing and was just like, nah, it's not going to hit. I think it's going to be, I don't think people are going to buy into it. No, that's, what? I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it for two seconds. I feel like it might have been a publicity stunt that they might have something in the works, which blah, blah, brings us to an article by Screen Rant, which came out on the 2nd of December, talking about the fact that uh, it's an understatement to say the Baby Yoda is a standout from The Mandalorian. The John Favreau created series is good thus far, and most people seem to like it. However, everyone is totally obsessed with the adorable infant. Obviously, like we said, there's been no merch, which, by the way, I thought a Furby would be a, a cool merch idea. That would be really cool. Again, fail. But recently, there is a shred of light coming through the gaping hole of desire, which is on Twitter, the official Funko account shared a GIF of Baby Yoda uh, sipping from his cup of soup in The Mandalorian's fourth episode, which was cute as heck, uh, from the Sanctuary episode. Uh, Reddit user Big Daddy Cool 96 shared several Baby Yoda Funko Pops from Target's system. The one that they show here is a 10 inch figure, potentially speculated it could be a 30, $29.99, $30 oh, variant, wow. and a smaller counterpart. So this is good. I'm, I'm, really I'm excited. I'm excited buy, that, I yeah. I, I will probably pick one up. I do wish, though, he was holding his cup of coffee. Yeah, like sipping I it. I would have loved that more <laughs> than that, but I would take this. This is definitely probably the best merch that's out there, unless you go to Etsy and do, I am sure some people have done some really cool stuff, but this pop figure, I'm not a pop I'm not person. A I, don't, collector. I don't collect yeah. them, but I will buy this. Right. It's a must. I mean, it's the first good piece of merch they've come out with. Star Wars stuff tends to become pretty collectible over time, too, so who knows? Maybe I'll pick up two. I really, really hope, though, that this isn't, you know, fake. I hope it's legit and we finally get some good Baby Yoda. Come on. We need Space Baby merch in our life. Um, so, yeah, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is kind of a, a change of pace here. So with all this Star Wars talk, we have the release of The Rise of Skywalker coming out on December 20th. And I kind of feel like that... As bad as it is, I'm seeing and hearing more about The Mandalorian than I am about the upcoming movie. And I saw a few interviews, um, like they had John Boyega, uh, who plays Finn, on uh, Jimmy Fallon recently. And um, we had J.J. Abrams start doing some interviews where he was talking about the movie. But all the press that I've heard about this so far, uh, for one, has failed with test audiences numerous times to the point that audiences have walked out. They said that uh, they brought in George Lucas to consult and then threw out 90% of the scenes that he shot. Uh, and then to make matters worse, um, I have 
he has not, but so I'm not going to say any spoil potential spoilers here, but I have been listening to some of the leaks that have been coming through with some of the potential endings, and it is going to be a travesty if they do I mean, some of the things that I'm hearing about. Are we talking worse than Last Jedi? Worse, way worse. It's bad. I'll it leave. is bad. I almost, I almost left Last Jedi. If we did not go to an IMAX, I might have left Last Jedi. We were laughing. Oh yeah, we, 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 we were, were we were just laughing laugh the out time. loud laughing in the middle of a theater. It was it was that bad. If Face you haven't watched it by now, then that's your fault. Yeah. Like when Snoke dies, I literally <laughs> looked at you and I was just like, no. we were so confused. <laughs> or flying Leia, Super Leia. That was so <laughs> that was, Oh my gosh. So oh bad. Man, but so uh th this this stands to top it. I didn't think it was possible, but somehow this might top it. Uh but we're we're not hearing a lot about the movie, and I think it's because Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, they aren't confident with what they're producing, and they don't want to build a bunch of hype because if you get everybody to go see it, uh, for one, I don't see Kathleen Kennedy carrying on the franchise after uh, this movie comes out. I think that Disney's going to replace her. I think, personally, John Favreau would be a good replacement for her. Uh, he has the industry knowledge. He has a good track history with Disney, Marvel, and you know, IPs that are huge and doing them justice. I, I think that Kathleen Kennedy was thrown into the mix at a time when there was a lot of women power uh, going through the public and everybody felt like, especially in Hollywood, that women weren't being represented. And then she was an advocate for that. However, she just uh, took it too far. How, yeah, well, and she wasn't familiar enough with Star Wars and uh, it shows, right? So... Uh, that's all I'm going to say. You know, I'm sure we'll have more on real Star quick, Wars. So, or I do want to. So, real quick, with the um, start with the you're saying John Favreau, I want to see what he could do in the Knights of the Old Republic era. That would be I, cool. There would be so much action, so much lightsabers, because that is when the Jedi. That's literally just Jedi territory, yeah. Sith territory, battles, battling against big each other. Battles. You had the Jedi Temple. You had the Sith Temple on Coruscant. Um, it would have. Or I think Korriban, and I think the Jedi Temple is on Coruscant. I, yeah, I have those mixed around because it's very similar, but it's that would be such a, a super amazing. And then I would do want to talk about just very no spoilers. I just want to like just a couple minutes about the new game because that's also the best the best game to come oh, out the, with the IP. Yeah, Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Yep, came out for P uh, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, I believe. Um, and I have absolutely loved it. I know you've played a little bit of it. I've played a lot more. Yeah. Um, I just started my playthrough. I'm doing a playthrough on Twitch. Uh, you can go watch a video. I streamed it last night. Um, I just started my playthrough. I got through, like, the tutorial. And so far, it's been it, awesome. You, it just feels like Star Wars. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. You, the it scale just, of the game seems just huge. You feel like you're in Star Wars. You're playing it. They did a really nice job with Cal. I'm not – I don't uh, – this is nitpicking – I don't really. I, one thing I also didn't like was um, Cal's facial expressions sometimes throughout the game are a little unbelievable. Um, like exaggerated. For example, like this isn't spoiler born. Like you're on the train and he's talking and, at the very beginning. Yeah, and okay. I just don't. I can't believe. Like it doesn't. I think that the I motion capture technology me. though and the realism, especially the stormtroopers at the very beginning of the game, looked so real. It was uncanny. I felt like I was watching a movie, but I could definitely see what you're talking about. I mean, it's a game. Face technology, though, has come a long way. That's what I'm saying. Way. I'm just nitpicking um, yeah. is basically what I'm doing. But it is. It's a great game. It is amazing. I we need more game. games like that. EA, kudos to you. Single player Single games, player, which they said, oh, single player games aren't going to. Nobody likes single player games. We're not going to make them. Yeah, well, guess what? You were wrong. Single this player games. This, this is the, is the, month. the month. This is Star Wars month, apparently. They are wrong. No microtransactions, no loot boxes. Uh, we have a good single player, no multiplayer, good single player Star Wars game. Here's the hoping that we get maybe some follow up DLC priced reasonably or possibly a sequel. I don't know. Not a lot has been talked about on that. Um, yeah. So switching gears, let's uh, let's get out of Star Wars territory. We've got a lot of other stuff I want to talk about. Um, December 3rd. December 3rd, anybody? Does, did anybody hear December 3rd? Uh, yeah, apparently a lot happened on December 3rd. Uh, first, December 3rd was the 25th anniversary of the original PlayStation releasing, which I saw a lot of articles and stuff going through Twitter, 
and it it always brings back like a really good time in my life. Um, it's one of my favorite consoles of all time, the PlayStation One. Obviously, now PlayStation is dominating this generation in gaming consoles, and it sounds like they're kind of next console, yeah, yeah, they're geared up to maybe take the reins and charge into uh, soon to be next gen. What is it? I think it's ninth, the ninth generation consoles. I don't know. Um, with just a sprint, like I, I have a feeling that they're going to dominate again, but uh, that was really, you know, fun uh, seeing all the old retro posts about all the old games and stuff. And uh, coincidentally, when I was doing some research, I linked these two uh, things together. There was a um, leak that uh, caught our attention, which was that Resident Evil 3 Potential remake cover art was leaked on the PlayStation Network. Coincidence that on their 25th anniversary, it leaked Leak. yeah. some remake uh, artwork? I think not. Uh, but who knows? I mean, it, it could have genuinely been a mistake. Um, what I will say, though, is that it sounds like people are saying that this is going to be an actual remake and not just, you know, graphical overhaul of the game. The last time we saw them do this was with Resident Evil 2, which I did an entire playthrough of, and it was awesome. They did add new um, new elements and changed up some of the pieces of it, changed the pacing, the camera. Uh, they did a really good job with that, and it seems like they're wanting to take that on uh, just a little bit further, mm -hmm. right? So uh, some of the things I'm going to... Um, go over is that they they released basically redesigns for nemesis jill and carlos now i do want to point out that i actually never i think i played it or watched a playthrough but i never played through it myself in in, in its entirety i never have so when this game comes out if it is a remake uh it's going to be an entirely new experience for me anyways but nemesis stands to be one of the greatest uh villains of the resident evil definitely one of the most iconic villains of the franchise so it's a really smart move that they keep doing this i you know and playstation playstation is doing it right you know i think out of all the consoles playstation figured out a good formula remake your old games they have so many great ips this was something else that i've been thinking about think of how many games playstation has remastered or remade in this console generation, they have the Spyro. They did all this, the three Spyros in a trilogy. Crash Bandicoot, Crash Team Racing. Uh, Final Fantasy X, I think, wasn't that the, the re remake? Yep, they're, and they're going to be doing Final Fantasy VII Seven. remake. Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. And then also recently they released uh, Medieval, uh, which is a game I really want to play. I never got to play that as a kid, but it looks fun. And it seems like they found that... Uh, special sauce that the 90s had is still really valuable with today's, uh, for one, like adults, for me, because I grew up with it and I have this huge nostalgia. And then for two, younger generations have heard about these games but never got an opportunity to play them. And they're still good games. Yeah. Uh, so here are some of the pictures posted on Twitter that were released um, by Nibble, Nibble? If I'm saying your name wrong, I do apologize. Nibelian. So that's good. Resident Evil 3. Um, we also have this screenshot. Pretty similar, uh, just without the, you know, changing in color, I guess. And then uh, we have this, the Z version, which uh, the article on IGN kind of goes through that the cover art seems to suggest that there's going to be a special edition called the Z version, uh, but they currently don't have any data to suggest what the variant may provide. But... I think this is cool. One of the things that is funny, though, and I, I have to point this out. Nobody's pointing this out yet. I don't ever remember Nemesis having a nose. <laughs> Why did you give him a nose? It looks weird, especially from the side. So from the front, it doesn't look so bad. But from the side, man, look at that nose. nose. I know. You get it from the side and you find out, <laughs> wait, that's a nose. Will this be a good game? Who really knows? But that's dad jokes all day. I got him. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, please. Uh, everybody knows this will be uh, probably a good remake. I just had to throw one more nose nose joke in. Because uh, everybody knows I like making those. I just those. now got those. Yeah, nose jokes. I forgot that you were saying. I didn't. Yeah, nose. Nose. yeah nose. Get it? And nose jokes. 
We got them. We got dad jokes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's kind it's of fun be, to. See. It's gonna be a pretty good game. It is gonna be, I hope, a pretty good game. I haven't seen if it's being remade by the same team or not. But the thing is, is they don't really have. Uh, obviously, it's by Capcom, but I don't know if it's the same team within Capcom, and we don't really have much information on it. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to say. Project Resistance. We don't care about that. Although this is pretty cool. I We're mean, this is cool about looking. this is kind of like the quality that you got in Resident Evil Two. Yeah. Um, on PC it was pretty good. So yeah, if you're a Resident Evil fan, that's some big news. Uh, keep an eye out for it. She's spray painting on him. Probably. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So the uh, other big news uh, actually revolves around Halo a little bit. Um, Halo: The Master Chief Collection just came out on PC, and I have, again, been a huge Halo fan ever since it came out on the original Xbox. It basically made um, online gaming what it is today. If it yes. wasn't for Halo, I don't think the the interest would... I mean, obviously, eventually, the interest would have been there. But Halo, especially Halo 2, is what drove it. I remember when the first Halo came out, we would have LAN parties at my buddy's house in his Morton building. We get together like, man, 10-plus people bring over... Multiple, multiple TVs. And yeah, consoles. <laughs> and we play like for days straight. So again, hit me right in the feels, the nostalgia feels. Uh, they released this uh, Master Chief Collection, which uh, includes Halo Reach, uh, Halo Combat Evolved, the first one, Halo 3, ODST, and Halo 4. What was really cool is like, so in my hometown, like you're talking about when you, when you played on land. So my hometown had an actual, every Saturday uh, from one to four, they had this building and it was called The Lot. And so from one to four on Saturdays, all the kids, teenagers would come and they would have like six TVs and six Xboxes, six versions of Halo 3. And we would all play LAN Halo 3 <laughs> together uh, between one and four. And it, what, it, what it was is it was done by a church in, in town and they were doing it to keep kids off the streets, keep kids out of trouble. So from one to four on Saturdays when kids have nothing else better to do than cause trouble. What's better to do than cause trouble? Play Halo 3. So that's what we did. Yeah, shoot each other with guns. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing better, right? <laughs> uh, it's funny. It makes it sound like you grew up in, like, the hood. You don't keep kids <laughs> out of trouble stopping. You know, me knowing, I'm not going to say it, but where you grew, where you grew up, <laughs> you're in your say, keep us out of trouble and joining those street gangs. We used to go play Halo and shoot each other up. But apparently, um, it's doing awesome, uh, which is... No surprise, um, this was released on Xbox the, earlier. The re-release re on Halo Reach for PC, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, article by PC Gamer outlined initially that the Master Chief Collection's player count was skyrocketing, that it was 7th place on the Steam Top 100 with more than 60,000 concurrent players, and it had only been live for 45 minutes. That's crazy. That is insane. Now, there was an update um, it doesn't say when this update was, but it had to have been today. Uh, maybe six no, hours six later. hours later. There we go. There <laughs> it is. Six when. Doesn't say when. Six hours later. Uh, the concurrent player count it was up to one hundred forty eight thousand, dude. It more than doubled. Oh, and it it was good enough uh, for third place in the top one hundred. It's crazy. So I have it. I haven't downloaded it. I should because on Saturday. Uh, I am going to be live streaming uh, some gameplay from it at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so, such a reminder if you want to see me play some of this. Uh, I don't really know which which game I'll be playing on here, but I might just test them all out and do some multiplayer. See if I still got, still got my uh, skills. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but it's only 40 bucks, which is a, like a huge deal. Steel. Yeah, it's a steal. Like... Dude, especially around so the holiday is, season. So, uh, I haven't actually looked at it yet, um, but I will be buying it. What? So it comes out with Reach, Combat Evolved, Halo 3, ODST, and Halo 4, right? Yep. Why didn't it come out with Halo 1 and Halo 2? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I wonder if there's a way that I can pull this up. Let's switch it over. I'm going to pull up my Steam, but I don't want you guys to see it yet. Not yet. Maybe yeah. Sometime. <laughs> It's a secret. I wonder why they didn't come out with one and two. Oh, uh, let's see. Halo Combat Evolved. If I'm going by the alphabet, which I should be. Uh, okay. The Master Chief Collection. 
Uh, let's see what this looks like. I want to preview this. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Like that guy that's on fire. This is fine. Um, yeah, so does it give me the rundown oh, of there? the games included in the pack? Let's go to the store page. Look at that. 13,000 very positive reviews. Recommended. Flag taken. There's still small customization features that they could do. I did hear that there's a ton of mods out already for this game. Oh, yeah. Like a ton of awesome mods. So that's really cool. Um, right here. Yeah. So Halo Reach. That's a DLC. Um, yeah. Okay. So it does come with Halo 2. They left one out. Halo okay. Reach. Halo Combat Evolved. The Anniversary Edition. Halo mm -hmm. 2. Halo 3. Halo 3 ODST and Halo 4. So actually more games in the article uh, calls out, which is, again, for, well, and this was the $40. Yeah, this is the $40 version. Mm -hmm. This is a steal. This is less than that $10 is a game. Yeah. And Halo 3 alone is worth 40 I would pay $40 for Halo 3 if that's all they came out with. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of see what the player base is like. I wonder if it's as toxic as the original Xbox Live was. I hope so. Because <laughs> that, yeah. I, it I, made hope, it, I hope it is. It made it fun. <laughs> All right, it made it fun. It, you know what? If you buy it, we need to do some multiplayer online. There is nothing more I want to do than shoot somebody with a rocket, <laughs> land on their body, and teabag them. Yeah. That is what I want. The, the old the old uh, rocket <laughs> rocket and teabag. Uh, okay. Sticking people with grenades and then teabagging them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so let's shift gears uh, yet again. We're going to get into some... Some news that I'm very passionate about. Um, and actually, speaking of violent video games and uh, blowing people up, it's a very good topic uh, to segue into the fact that YouTube is changing how it moderates video game content. Oh no, big surprise. Uh, I'm sure if none of you guys have heard about it by now, uh, then, then you don't care. Then you don't <laughs> care or you uh, don't watch YouTube. <laughs> Because about every single content creator and their family has talked about the fact that YouTube and Google got absolutely owned by COPPA, um, which is a protection act uh, for online, for, for children's uh, viewing of online content and what kind of ads are being shown to them. Um, let's see, it's a children's online privacy and protection act. Okay. And uh they got a, a Google and YouTube got a huge fine and uh, they are changing some of their settings. So now when you upload a video, uh, you have to mark if it is uh, an, like an adult video or for children. And if you do, people were concerned if you mark that it's for children, uh, that you can't get ads on your videos, therefore no revenue. And a lot of these people just that make kids content are going to go away. I personally don't really care about that. And then on the flip side of that, if you market non-children or family-oriented content, uh, you can potentially get a yellow icon, which back when I was doing YouTube in 2013, this was one of the main reasons that I initially left YouTube is because when the adpocalypse happened, all of my content um, had limited ads being ran on it, which is what the yellow icon does. And it's a significant difference. You go from... Uh, like literally you make cents per view, like one or two cents per view when you have a yellow icon. Uh, so there's, you know, this is basically, it was the equivalent of like Adpocalypse 2.0 happening on YouTube after this whole COPPA, throwing down the hammer on YouTube and Google. And then YouTube basically just threw the responsibility back on its content creators and said, hey, uh, why don't you get a lawyer to consult with to see how you should be... Um, Handling your channel. Handling your channel and how you should be labeling your videos because they were threatening to throw around like a, the COPPA and was looking at throwing around like a $43,000 fine per video that violated, um, that violated it, uh, children's privacy. So mm -hmm. that's huge, right? Who the heck is going to want to create uh, content? YouTube creators are already having like problems with, um, uh, you like uh, copyright. Oh yeah, and copyright and copyright and getting, systems and moving horrible. around that. And so now on top of that, now they YouTube's like, okay, well, all these kids, all these content creators are making uh, children 
videos. Uh, you can't, now you have copyright, you have to worry about, oh, by the way, instead of us worrying about it, we're just gonna throw this, um, this problem that we have with the um, the moderating and the violent video game and the content. Right. We're gonna throw that on you to also worry about. Good luck figuring yeah, that good, out. Yeah, good luck. But on December 2nd, and it really isn't a surprise to me, YouTube realized that there are companies who want to advertise to more mature audiences. They exist. Weird. <laughs> Strange. People who make R-rated movies or adult products, they want their ads shown on more mature content. Uh, so they're changing some of how they moderate uh, video game violence specifically, which affects me, like I said. GTA was my, and still is, uh, the biggest series I created, GTA Five Online. And it was an incredibly violent video game, and they considered it violent content. And I never understood that. Now, what YouTube is saying is that they're no longer going to restrict violent video game content starting today, which was December 2nd, as of December 2nd, um, in a Google support post. They said, we know there's a difference between real world violence and scripted or simulated violence, such as what you see in movies and TV shows or video games. So we want to make sure we're enforcing our violent or graphic content policies consistently. So I'm I'm looking to see if they update their policy um, to align with this, and I would like I would like it to come back to being a little bit more open. Really, what I feel like if YouTube or anybody at YouTube is listening to this or Google, uh, I am a parent, and one of the things I will say is that my children primarily watch. Um, the main YouTube instead of the kids. YouTube really doesn't promote YouTube kids at all. There's there's no, like, there is no ads for YouTube kids. There's no, nothing. It's like it doesn't exist. So for one, if you want people using your YouTube kids app and website, you need to promote it. Yes. The sheer lack of promotion and awareness around it, even though it's been out for so long, shows me or at least uh, the general audience as parents, that you guys didn't really want people, children, using that app. You wanted them to use the main site. If you didn't, you would have put a bigger emphasis on that. I the know, other thing is- a children's YouTube app? Yeah. The, the, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, That's it's, how bad app It's a specific uh, YouTube Kids. It's YouTube Kids. Did not know that existed. Exactly. My point, exactly. And you're on YouTube how often? Pretty often. Yeah. Probably every day. Daily? Yeah, m multiple times a day? Yep, on my phone, on my... No idea that it existed. On my PS4, on my... And you you are PC. not... Yeah, and you are not... I mean, you, you are technologically savvy. Yeah, you, I did, you, not, you, did it, not know there was a camera. Right, version. so do you hear that, Google, YouTube? With how much I am on the internet alone, I should have heard about it by now. Yeah, there, there was um, an article that the president of YouTube uh, was quoted in saying that her own kids don't use the app. <laughs> What? Then why? Uh, it just job. doesn't make any sense. The other thing I want to throw out there is, um, A, I am happy. I am so sick as a parent of listening to these ridiculous, uh, these ridiculous slime videos and these fake YouTube families like the Yeagers or Yeagers that my kids are obsessed with. It's all fake. It is just... It's like turns your kids into zombie, brainless stupidity material. I really hope that they go away now that Coppa put the hammer down. And channels like Logan Paul and uh, oh, there was another one that were promoting like Logan Paul just basically flat out so, like sold his merch to kids to the point that he was saying, you're not cool in school unless you own some of my merch. And you know, as a kid, uh, that's pretty important. You want to feel yeah. like you're a part of the crowd. And he directly says it in numerous videos. You know, I, I want to see the hammer come down on those kind of people. I want to, I want to see the hammer come down on the right people. I want to see the type of content uh, that is literally addicting my children to the platform to go away. And I did find out, YouTube, that you cannot block a channel on YouTube. 
I was going to go block the Jaegers. So my kids, if they searched it, couldn't access their channel. Yeah. Doesn't exist. The only That's place crazy. it exists is on YouTube Kids. I can't believe it. The only thing that you can block on YouTube. And here, I'll... Uh, so you can only block channels on YouTube Kids that kids aren't even using. Right. <laughs> so if I go to YouTube and uh, we'll go to the... This is this is one of the stupid YouTube families, right? Shot of the Jaegers. I'm calling them out. 4.11 million subscribers. My kids watch this crap non-stop. Um, and it's oh, and literal. Play a video? Yeah, it's literal. Uh, it's literal garbage. So we'll just, I'll give them a view. Secret message from the doll maker. Uh, my kids are obsessed with this crap. And this is a series that they're doing about a doll that's possessed and haunts their family. And my daughter thinks it's real, you know? And so I was like, all right, how do I, how do I block these guys? Um, well, simply you can't, um, you could come up. There is a way to, I think there is a block option, but the only thing that it does is it blocks them from being able to message you on your own videos and profile. That's all the blocking does. Uh, report. That's an option. Yeah. <laughs> report them. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not actually report them, but go into report real quick. You want to see the options? Yeah. I just want to see if there is. So when you block okay, blo user. Block user. That's it. Prevent them from commenting on videos you've uploaded. YouTube. Why? Why'd Why? you create a whole new platform when you could have just implemented something as easy as this? Yes, I don't want to go through and block every single one I don't want my kids to watch. But this also gives me a good avenue to be like, okay, well, here's this. You can, you can at least can't, you can find the ones that your kids are actively watching that aren't good and block those. Right. And again, the main issue is that nobody really knows that YouTube kids exist. Even if I go, let's see, let's see what it takes to actually find it. So we're on the homepage. Here's more from YouTube over here on the left-hand side. Premium YouTube movies, shows, gaming, not kids. Live. Where's their kids? Hmm? Where is it, YouTube? Let's go here. Um, nope, that just minimizes things. Uh, so then let's do a search. Oh, wow. You have to do a completely separate search for YouTube kids. Watch it on the web, it says here. Drag oh, yeah, this. I can't see that. Yeah, I'm going to drag it down so you guys can see it. Look right here on the site. Uh, watch it on uh, your tablet, your Android device, or on the web. Why is it so hard to find this? I don't understand. It's also a very poor homepage. Very, it is. It's a very, it, it, it doesn't even resemble what I feel like. Now look, it doesn't even bring up an option to search. Like, okay, let's go <laughs> watch on web. Okay. I'm a parent. Okay, it's gonna make it's gonna take it through setting all that up. So this is dumb. <laughs> That's all I have to say. This is stupid. Seriously. I want YouTube kids for my children. How long has YouTube kids been out? Uh, let, let me let me see if I can find out. YouTube because kids. If it's new, then I can understand how I because I'm online quite a bit. Oh uh, it, it released February 23rd of 2015. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's been out that long. Oh, that's hilarious. I guarantee you the majority of users on YouTube don't know that this even exists. Uh, for example, on Netflix, it's so easy look to right find here. Netflix look, for kids. See, this whole problem. All right, I'm going to pull this up. Look, so I'm on Wikipedia right now, okay? I want to point out how incredibly important this is. Uh, can I... So COPPA's big deal was that ads were being shown to users and information was being collected yeah. on individuals under the age of 13. YouTube Kids was created uh, with curated selections of content, parental controls, and filtering videos deemed inappropriate for viewing by kids 12 and under. This was your ticket 
not to be fined millions of dollars. This was your ticket to not having these harsh penalties coming down on all your content creators. And now everybody else is in an uproar and is going to be affected by it because you simply didn't care enough to let people know that this exists. And you allowed people like Logan Paul, Shot of the Jaegers, and all these other stupid YouTube channels that are out there to hook kids in and collect information. Right, we are running out of time, so we got And this is a very hot topic, but we do got to move on. So anyways, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> uh, okay, and then real quick, we'll talk about, we have two more topics. We'll brush on a little bit. Uh, onto some Twitch news, uh, Zero, which apparently was the most successful Super Smash Brother uh, player for the Wii U of all time, uh, left and went to Facebook, which I don't know why in the world you'd go to Facebook, dude. Nobody, dude, if you're going to go somewhere, a lot of people have been moving to Mixer, like... Uh, um, well, I've, been, I've heard that Mixer is Ninja. not doing too well. It's not. I mean, let's be honest. It, it's not. If you're going to move I anywhere... Knows? You might be onto something, dude. Maybe Facebook is just going to be the new thing. No, dude. Let's get real. <laughs> the next big live streaming service eventually is going to be YouTube. YouTube is eventually going to take over with its live streaming. Twitch had its shot in popularity. What's happening right now on Twitch is that when it first started, there was very little people streaming on the platform. So you were highly discoverable. Then as time went on, uh, the categories that were initially there started getting filled up, so it became more advantageous to stream games that not a lot of people watched. Now that time has passed. Now we're at the time where the entire platform is completely it's oversaturated. You, the discoverability on Twitch is basically zero, right? As a matter of fact, like I said at the beginning, even this is going to be turned into a YouTube video. The only way... In 2019, I'm telling most content creators that they have maybe six months to do this. To grow as an entertainer in 2019 moving forward, you're going to have to create content outside of Twitch. You're going to have to become uh, a YouTuber, TikTok. Uh, you're going to have to be present on social media because these days, you cannot be discovered on Twitch only. And, and if you do, it's by sheer luck. Um, the, the searchability and discoverability on YouTube and those other platforms is way better. Their algorithms are way better. You're going to have to, you, you're going to have to transition. Very few people are doing it. And the ones that do are going to become successful. So I feel like that's why we're seeing so many people beginning to move away mm -hmm. and just trying out different platforms. I'm sure this guy got a huge paycheck. Yeah. from Facebook. Uh, Facebook has been trying to make a push. We actually have a buddy, uh, Sparky Sin, that has been going around uh, the U.S. Um, playing guitar and stuff. Most on the East Coast right now. Yeah. And doing uh, playing guitar and doing some during the October. Um, during October, he did a lot of uh, the, well, I guess the whole thing is about him going to haunted, haunted, places. haunted locations, playing, playing guitars, yep, busking, playing. went to Salem uh, for the month of October. And he, he broadcasts a lot on Facebook and, you know, it's not a bad, bad platform, but I don't think for gaming content, it's going to be that no, big, I don't right? Think so either. It's more of like a vlogging. I think it's more of like a vlogging thing. Yeah. Um, like, you know, I think his name is Brandon Ferris. I watch him a lot. Um, and that's why I discovered him was on Facebook. And so like Facebook is a very good discoverability thing, but I just don't think for gaming. Like, it's I good for I'm videos. Not go to face yeah, it's good for videos. Yeah, I, I find I'm a vlogging. lot of videos on, vlogging. on it's Facebook. It's really good for vlogging. I'm yeah. just, I don't care to watch games on Facebook. That's not what I go to Facebook about. I go to for the social media, the social part, not really video games. I agree. So uh, that, that kind of, I guess, uh, wraps up you know, where things are at with the two big platforms right now, YouTube and Twitch. If we find anything else Green. out, we'll let Facebook's you know next week. And, and fa Facebook, yeah, <laughs> pretty big. <laughs> That's not I've going heard. away. Uh, so lastly, up on the agenda tonight, we have the 2019 Game Awards has a little controversy going on with it. So Kojima, um, after leaving Konami, uh, founded his own studio. The first game came out, Death Stranding which basically was received with lukewarm uh, reviews. 
You know, uh, some some people I've talked to said it's really good. A lot of the critics say it's kind of like, ah, eh, you know, and I think a lot of people are giving Kojima a pass because of everything he went through at Konami and uh, they gave it a little bit more praise than maybe it's deserved. I don't know. I haven't played it. My PlayStation broke. So here's the issue is that. Uh, so for one. Death Stranding was nominated for an ungodly amount, in my opinion, of awards, including Game of the Year at this year's 2019 Game Awards. And it has a lot of viewers, as Kotaku says, openly wondering whether or not it's related to the Game Awards producer, Jeff Knightley, because he has a very public relationship with Kojima. Uh, Knightley says he doesn't nominate or even vote on awards. So that's, I mean, that's your answer. But that's your answer. He just he doesn't nominate for votes or an award. Sa- he says that if he did, do you really think that he would come out and say it anyways? No, but I think he doesn't. So here's the thing is that Knightley even appeared as an NPC in the game, apparently. No, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's what he did. So he I think so. So he was put into the game. Um, but you also have to think about it. And he was in Metal to, Gear if Solid. Someone I think. came up to us and was like, hey, you want to be in a game? And we weren't gonna vote on that game, and we were the producers. I'm not gonna say no. Yeah. If I'm gonna be on it, if I'm if I'm, someone asked me to be in a game and I had special interest in an award for that game, I would still say I'm not gonna say no. Well, I agree with that, but it is still suspicious, right? So they're friends. They've been friends since 2015. Kojima gets shafted by Konami. Uh, when the award for Metal Gear Solid 5 happened, I don't remember what year it was, but it won an award. Kojima couldn't even accept it, so Keith Sutherland, the, the guy who voiced Big Boss, accepted it on his behalf. And Knightley's, he's a very integral part of the Game Awards. Um, and then afterwards, after that whole Metal Gear Solid 5 acceptance deal, he even got on stage and... Uh, like Kotaku says, he did an impassioned speech that went viral immediately and said that Konami had not allowed Kojima to attend the awards. So if you want to watch it, it's there. Uh, but I I feel like it's suspicious. Um, you know, if we take a look at the game awards, I wanted to show you this. All right. So here's all the, I, I actually I went out and I voted. I recommend everybody do it um, before it comes out. It's super easy. Uh, to go and vote on all these categories. So these are all the categories, okay? You could search for a game. Oh, you should, we should click on, all right, we'll do that on our own time. (laughs) If you look up Death Stranding. Yeah. It's in all of those. These are all the categories it's been nominated in. Game of the Year, Action Adventure, Art Direction? I, I'm sorry. It's not anything the, new. No, there is not. Actually, I didn't vote for it. I voted for the Legend of Zelda remake, I think. Yeah, I, I went for this. This, that is, yeah, that's. Look at its competitors. Shikiro, Shadow, Shadows Die Twice. Look that's at, been good. That, that, look that look, really look good at this artwork. graphical design. I know. What is what is special about the graphical design of this? N- literally nothing. Um, the other ones, audio design, it did have some good voice actors, so I'll throw that at it. I haven't heard the game music, so I don't know about that. Game direction, that was one of its big biggest criticisms. People were calling it a walking simulator. Like, why is it game direction, narrative, and score and music? So, I definitely don't yeah, think... Do, I do not believe... I either. voted for Resident Evil 2. I, I hope that you guys go out... Vote for Resident Evil 2. Vote for Super Smash Brothers Online or the Outer, Outer Worlds. Worlds. Outer Worlds. Give Outer Worlds some love. Yeah, like, come on. Like, Obsidian especially deserves that. Like, yes. give some love to some of these other games. I don't want to... I am a Kojima fan, and I love a lot of his work, but I just feel like it's it's just very suspicious that this game is in so many of the categories, and it can't be overlooked. Um, I, I really hope that the people go out and they do the right thing and vote for the games that deserve it. And you know what? If it wins, I hope it deserved to win. Um, with that, you know, to wrap things up, uh, the Gaming Awards is on the 12th, I believe. Let me double check. I have it on my schedule. So the Game Awards for 2019 is going to be on December 12th. 
starting at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. What That's day, on a, that? It's on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm actually going to be live streaming uh, this event. You come watch it on the Thunderbird live channel. Hear my live reactions. Too. You want to come? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll give our live reactions then. And uh, <sighs> something bad always happens. There's always a lot of cringe that happens at the Game Awards. A lot of cringe. I wish we could have live streamed the Blizzard BlitzCon. Oh, that, BlitzCon. That always has. That always has. <laughs> well, we're, we're going <laughs> to. That's a fun time. You know, I'll release a schedule. Uh, we are going to. I at least am going to be live streaming more uh, live events, especially now that events are being broadcasted live, mm -hmm. uh, giving my reactions to them. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. Um, I don't have. I don't have high hopes, though, that uh, things are going to go the way I want it to. Um, here, let me, let me look at this. Kingdom Hearts 3. God, there was so... I feel like there was quite a few good... Oh, Final Fantasy 14, though. That's Shadowbringers. I know. That was really good. I might actually have to... I think that'll probably be my vote. I did like Kingdom Hearts 3. I, for role-playing, though, it just didn't immerse me. Really yeah. Well. No, Kingdom Hearts... Or now, Final Fantasy 14. It was too When we easy. went through that... Final Fantasy 14? No. Oh, I was gonna say, well, you know, I was going to say, because that's because you didn't do Titania X or any of those. No. Um, but I felt like my character, like I was super evolved, involved in that character when the new, uh, especially when the new classes came out this year. We're going off topic, but I was, that, I was super into my character, super excited. I created my character as soon as the um, uh, demo came out that you could create your character, created mine, yeah, saved it. Yeah, I remember that. You created did. Created everything. Yep. Saved everything. Was like, this will be it. Super excited, and I put time into that because I actually cared about my character, and I think that's there's some good. I mean, there are some good there. nominees. I really, I really hope that some of these games get love, though. My opinion: Resident Evil Two Game of the Year, hands down. I know it's in. What's crazy is this is a game that's already been released before. When you look at some of these competitors, though, like like I said, this is kind of a wash. I don't feel like this deserves to be here. This is basically Dark Souls um, yeah. Samurai. You know, samurai mm -hmm. style Dark Souls. What's not really innovative? These two, it should just be these three. Because I, I didn't play Control, but I heard about it. It's a game that kind of missed the mark. Not a lot of marketing happened around it. I heard it's good, but I don't know if it's game of the year material. I saw it just didn't look interesting to me. So, you know, and if, if it was up to me, the nominee should be Resident Evil 2, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and the Outer Worlds. But go cast your votes. Make sure I'll post a... Um, uh, I'm gonna post an event on my channel soon, uh, which you can you can hit follow on my Twitch channel, and it'll remind you when I go live, so you can catch our live reactions for the Game Awards 2019. But that's all that we have for this week. Uh, so and we will be uploading a um, Tichi Tichi Tichi. We're gonna be uploading Tichi. Sounds like T -G -E. a, a fighting game character. <laughs> this is the first episode. I don't even know what we're called yet. TGE. TGE, by the way, stands for hey. Technology, Gaming, and Entertainment. So this is the Technology, Gaming, and Entertainment show. It will be weekly, every single Wednesday. Um, I will. We will set the time. This one was a little bit um, later. later than, than we're typically going to be streaming. Up. Yeah, so... Forgot that we're having it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll probably be going live uh, a little bit earlier with this show, but... Uh, it's going to be your news roundup for technology, gaming, and entertainment. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. Um, we're going to be uploading a video uh, with some bite-sized shareables uh, that you can share to all your friends about different topics and things that we discussed. And if you're a fan, make sure that you uh, hit that follow button uh, so you can get all our latest content, all my latest content. And you can also subscribe um, which gets you uh, custom emotes, and we do have icons on the channel as well uh, for people that subscribe. Um, not to mention, check out all my social medias and Thunderbird Gaming. Like I said, Thunderbird Gaming is my YouTube channel. It's gonna have a lot more content being uploaded on a frequent basis. Uh, last shout out is to my merch store. Go get yourself some Thunderbird merch. Remember, if you, gift it. If anyone buys some merch, if anyone buys a single piece of merch. I will wear the Thunderbird bra for an entire episode that next week. The Thunder bra. He's over committing to it. Over, over, shirt. over the shirt. I'm committed. I will buy one and I will wear it. Buy yourself some merch. Buy your friends some merch. And then I will probably give it Buy your grandma a like Thunder mug or a dirty Thunder mug. I want to get myself one of those. Uh, but thank you so much for everybody who came out and joined us. Again, I've been Thunderbird. I'll see you guys next time. See you.